In a world where the importance of sleep and airway health for kids is gaining so much momentum, we're here to provide you with a clear pathway through the maze of information. Join us as we connect with experts, share real life stories, and break down the complexities that surround this critical issue. From screening techniques to collaboration with our medical colleagues, we're here to empower you with actionable insights and a supportive community. Let's navigate the path together to healthier sleep, brighter futures, and happier families. This is ASAP Pathway. Hey, everybody. Before we start this week's episode, I wanted to thank one of our sponsors, Partners Dental Studio. Um, They're your lab, all things ortho and airway, rooted in five main promises, quality, innovation, consistency, dependability, and communication to ensure that your practice thrives. Partners promises unwavering dependability in every aspect, from timely communication to precise delivery, ensuring seamless orthodontic treatments and satisfaction. Together, we create lasting smiles that impact lives. Give them a try. Their link's in the podcast. Back to the episode. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the ASAP Pathway podcast. I'm your host today. And again, uh, honored to be with my partner in crime. So Dr. Stacy and Dr. Tracy today. And then (laughs) we also like, we also have the most amazing guest today, Dr. Audra Yoon. And I feel like she's like a, a, like a silent partner. She's been on this journey with us for years in, in this uh, platform. And uh, we definitely wouldn't be where we are today without all the hard work that you have done. So I'm just so honored that you're here today and sharing your busy, busy time with us. Welcome. Thank you for having me. It is a pleasure to be here. Um, for those, and I don't know if, I mean, I'm going to do a micro introduction of Dr. Yoon. Um, her bio is huge. It's impressive. It's, uh, I have so much respect for her, but for those of you who do not know Dr. Audra Yoon, she is a dual trained orthodontist and pediatric dentist who specializes in sleep medicine. She's been established. Well, she established the world dental facial sleep society and serves as a founding president. She's also a diplomate of the American Board of Dental Sleep Medicine and a diplomate of the American Board of Orthodontics. She's currently a clinical professor of Stanford Sleep Medicine Center at Stanford University and an assistant professor in orthodontics at the University of Pacific. She founded Pacific's Ortho Dental Sleep Medicine Fellowship at the University of Pacific and serves as a program director. She is a board of directors at the Edward H. Engel Society of Orthodontists, Northern California, a board of director at the California Sleep Society and international board of director at the Korean Association of Dental Sleep Medicine. She completed her orthodontic and pediatric dentistry residencies at UCLA. She also earned her doctor of dental surgery and master of science degree, completing extensive research in obstructive sleep apnea at UCLA as well. She practices the full scope of non-surgical and surgical orthodontics from the pediatric to the geriatric population for airway management. And here we go, a lot of abbreviations, Mm -hmm. um, including growth modification, pediatric palatal expansion, customized mini screw assisted rapid palatal expansion, also known as MARPI, distraction osteogenesis maxillary expansion, known as DOME, Orthodontic treatment for the maxillomandibular advancement, MMA, clear aligner therapy, and oral appliances for sleep apnea. As you can tell, she just doesn't do much. <laughs> <laughs> you are amazing, Audrey. You really are. I'm flattered. <laughs> um, I wanted to dive in because you've got some, we all know you, you've been very heavily involved in research and dental sleep medicine. I think is your orthodontic residency the first one that includes sleep medicine? You then- can say it. Uh, even during my residency, I didn't see the connections, but um, that that time I actually kind of started doing sleep apnea research because I was able to 
meet my uh, mentor that time, Dr. Pe, and then Dr. Ronald Harper. I probably you read his article, the old uh, brain research, um, that what happened after the hypoxic conditions. And that was, he was the professor that time at UCLA, uh, all those MRI brain research. So that time, actually, I was honored to work with him. And I ended up uh, doing my master with them. So that time I kind of learned the uh, sleep apnea and I published the articles, but that time was more um, basic science research and brain research on the red model. I, I really didn't have a good connection uh, with the ortho and the sleep apnea. That one, that journey started later uh, after I met CJ. So that is like 10 years later. <laughs> For those who don't know who CG is, he is like the father of sleep medicine. Um, his name is Dr. Christian Guimano, the late Dr. Christian Guimano. We'll talk about more about your relationship with him uh, later because it's really an interesting story and quite uh -huh. a journey that you two went on together that I think would be great to talk about. What I wanted to really kind of hone in on and then Tracy jump in at any time, but was the World Dental Facial Sleep Society. For those of you who aren't familiar with that, um, it's been out, what, about a year, year and a half? Year and a half, yeah. yeah. About a year and a half anniversary. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> and um, those of you who you want to become a member, um, there's also uh, the Sleep Society, the WDSS Congress coming up this fall. But uh, if you want to check out the website, it's Dento facialsleep.org. But I wanted to talk about like, why did you start that? <laughs> so it's a long story, but yeah, we will have wonderful meeting from November 7 to 10 at the San Francisco airport, Marriott waterfront. And the weather is typically great at the time of year and perfect time to visit Napa Valley afterward. So I invite all of your listeners to join us to become a part of this history event. How I started is long story, but um, the World Dental Facial Sleep Society started from a big idea um, shared with my mentor, Dr. Christian Ginami, you know, so CG, we call CG. He, he was a legend in sleep medicine. And uh, when we go, when we went to international sleep meeting, you know, I'm only one of very few dentists and orthodontists who attend this international sleep meeting. And CG always talk about how we need more orthodontists and dentists in the sleep medicine field. One time it was IPSA in Taiwan, he even challenging me, uh, Audrey, can you bring ever a hundred dentists to sleep meeting? You know. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Let me, let me. I try. <laughs> you know, I felt his spirit is with us today. Like while we are doing his top podcast, I mean, uh, I missed him so much. Mm. But his encouragement was really the spark that got things rolling. So in the history, there are two international sleep organizations. I'm talking about medical organizations. So CG founded WASM, that was a World Association of Sleep Medicine. And then Dr. Kli Kushida, who is my current mentor at Stanford, he founded World Sleep Federation. And there's two international sleep society merged to one. So they collaborated to found one international organization, which was the sleep, World Sleep Society. So they merged to one in 2016. And uh, after they merged, they had a first sleep meeting was in the Prague in 2017. At that time, CG really, you know, uh, pushed the dome and Marpi technique. So that was a big hit. We had a uh, like, over seven symposium presentation during this, the, the World Sleep Congress about, we're talking about all the maxillary expansions. And that time, um, Dr. Leopold of Korea, that was his first to us, the sleep meeting, he was in the audience. And I guess mm -hmm. he was impressed with my talk. And then later um, my flight got delayed in the Prague airport. And I ran into the Leopoldo again. And so we end up having coffee and he suggests that we should collaborate. We should work together. <laughs> <laughs> and then he said, oh, maybe we're going to possibly create in the pediatric dental sleep medi um, 
Medicine Mini Residency at Tufts University. So we suggested to the Tufts University and you know, Tufts wanted to test the water. So we had a one day pediatric dental sleep seminar. I believe uh, Tracy, you were there <laughs> at the mm -hmm. one day Tufts University seminar. And our program was sold out uh, in a week. And then we had the best to review best feedback from attending in the history of Tufts University C courses. Like everybody gave five, five, five. Um, and we convinced them to start. That's how we started um, Tufts University Pediatric Dental Mini Residency Program. And they led us to, like, let me plan whatever the, the program. You know, when we started running this mini residency program, more than half of our attendee actually travel from different countries. Like we had over 25 countries attendee and many of them had a no prior education in dental sleep medicine. And um, through them, we had a few messages like Dean of several dental school in different country reach out to us, uh, help ask for help in building their dental sleep medicine curriculum in their university. And we really realized we really there's no set global guidance, um, and there is like right. Yeah, we will, they need a guidance. So there are a lot of a small group here and there working together, but we are not communicating together. There's no guidance. It's like sometimes it's a wild west. Some of them is really like out there. Um, so we thought that okay, we need to actually put all people together and then learn each other and then we need to come up with a new guideline and set the standard. And uh, one memorable night, maybe perhaps many wines or maybe too many beers. <laughs> <laughs> the Leopoldo and I decide to form, okay, we, we're going to make international organizations. And then we wrote the name, um, the on the napkin, like many names. I still have the pictures of the napkin. Oh, I love this story. <laughs> But then, you know, now there is now word one, word sleep society, but there's no dental sleep society. So, and we want to collaborate with them. So why don't we have a word dental sleep society? But then I don't like the name only dental because we do more than teeth. We change facial structures. Mm -hmm. So um, let's put the facial in there. That's, that's why it became word dental facial sleep society. And, but then my mental CG passed away um, right after and, and COVID pandemic slowed things down. <clears throat> so I thought it's going to be a while. But then I shared this idea very casually with my current mentor, Dr. Kali Kushida. Um, he, he's the head of Asli Medicine at Stanford. And I just to talk about a little bit. And then the next day, Dr. Kushida wrote me the long email, came up with a game plan. Oh, wow. <laughs> you know, he's the one who found the, the World Sleep Federation. He also uh, was the founder of a California Sleep Society. So he know how to do it. It's just, I think I just, luck, I was lucky to talk to the right person. He just gave me the game plan and he said, Audrey, this is the right time. Do mm. it now. Um, yeah. And because the next year we're going to have a World Sleep Society meeting and we are actually um, making program and if you want to join this is the right time and he just gave me a few names to talk to and you know you just need to know a few right person right so within a week uh, we complete the required paperwork just like that we just became official so um, and this is like how the WDSS came to be uh, we just we wanted to really have a dental and medical professional yeah. together have a better understanding so it's and been crazy but amazing journey it's well it's funny you said several times in the story you know as luck would have it um you know you got stuck at the airport and then you start talking and then another meeting and i i believe that things happen for a reason and people um cross each other's paths for a reason and I just don't even know if there's a better person in the timing of all of this and somebody like you and uh, the group of people that you are um, a part of to do this. I mean, this is good timing. Don't you agree? Yeah. Like, Trace, like, I feel like the temperature of the environment right now is so ready for something like this. Don't you? Well, yeah, I mean, 
I think, gosh, I think Audrey's having an amazing year. I mean, she's, she's probably one of the leaders in putting out the research and the av mm -hmm. and, and advocacy for interdisciplinary care. And I think that's one thing that, um, is really important that you, when you advocate, you know, dentistry's involvement, you're asking, you're advocating dentistry's involvement in an interdisciplinary setting. You know, I mean, like one of her landmark papers that that she got uh, published was in the Sleep Medicine Journal, and I think it was met with a lot of resistance in the dental community. But I thought it was interesting because we talked about it at the Koi Center, and I said, I don't think what people understood what this letter meant. This letter was a cry to the medical community saying, hey, this is who we are, and this is how we can help. It wasn't a letter to tell orthodontists how we should do work. It was more of an educational piece. I mean, and I thought that was amazing because the medical community really don't know what we can do. I mean, like I, I was just at the ADA and one of the doctors that was on the panel with me and it was interesting. It was another, it was, it was basically about, you know, dentistry being a part of your overall oral systemic connection. And the doctor on that panel, he said, he turned around and he looked at me and goes, Tracy, I didn't know there was an answer beyond CPAP. Mm. I mean, like, and that's being very honest yes. about that education. And so, and I was like, yeah, there it is. And he goes, I really enjoyed this. And I think, I mean, to um, Audrey's credit, I mean, she really, she's not telling people how to do dentistry. She's telling the medical community what we can do. And I think that's huge. Yes. And I think that your, what you're doing with the World Dental Sleep Society, I mean, that's amazing right now because we don't, there is not an organization right now that has connected with the community outside of AOSH. AOSH is really great of doing dental and medical, but when it comes to like airway management and sleep, I mean, Audrey's group, the World Dental Sleep, I mean, they, it, it's a, it's amazing what they're doing. And, and I, September, um, November, and November in uh, San Francisco, I mean, it's going to be huge because what? like, if, if there's a place that you want to actually meet other professionals outside of dentistry mm -hmm. and hear about procedures outside of dentistry, that's, that's the meeting to go to. I just wanted, I have the flyer. So I was like combing through it and just to list some of the nations represented um, and the featured speakers. I mean, it's like medical doctors, dental. We've got so much collaboration. There's Italy, India, Spain, Colombia, Singapore, um, Taiwan, Chile, Australia. And Stacey, you have all of the researchers with that were that have the biggest papers on, on her panel. I mean, you have Maria Villa. She is the one mm -hmm. that wrote the two year follow up on expansion in OSA, which I think you should probably have next on your um, podcast. Yeah, but I need to reach out to her. Maybe Audrey yeah. can connect me with her. After <laughs> having all those speakers, I mean, to have all of those people and to see them in like three days, I mean, like you you almost get a little bit starstruck because every, everyone is that part of academia. I, I feel bad. Yeah, everybody speak with me like, only keynote speaker one hour, even feature speaker only 50, 30 minutes, and then most of the speaker talk 15 minutes. We have to we have too many speaker packed. Oh, but so that's good though. You know, like like in the restorative academy, like I love when it's like action packed because mm. it's kind of like what, what what's my take home, you know? Um yeah, but you actually get a lot of information. Mm -hmm. And uh yeah, some of the speakers they are like big names. They are big names, and I feel I'm so honored they are willing to come because we are nonprofit organizations so we don't even offer honorarium and uh, they are willing to fly international and just to do it uh, for us it's, it's really means a lot you know like it's been only one year um, since we established and now um, more than 11 countries dental sleep society became affiliated society with us pretty much most of the current existing dental sleep medicine society out there are uh, collaborating with us. The mm -hmm. thing is that not many, not many country has a dental sleep society. So we are really pushing those country that don't have a dental society. So this year, Hong Kong and then Malaysia launched their own dental sleep society. And then my current fellow will start society in Kuwait next year. Wow. And there is a little movement in Philippines and Thailand. So uh, I mean, just it's a happening. It's just more than community. It's kind of movement and camaraderie, you know, with the like, common missions. I agree. And 
it's very exciting right now. I say this a lot, but I really believe it is just an exciting time to be in dentistry, in the dental profession. I think the collaboration over the next five years um, and 10 years between medicine and dentistry is going to be huge. Um, and the acknowledgement of sleep is one of the pillars of health and especially in children. If we can get to these kids early, um, I think it's exploding. And I think, like I said, this is the perfect timing and nobody um, better than you to get this started. And, and you say you're so honored. I think so. this speaks to, I mean, I'm looking at all of these people. These are amazing amazing people in research right now. And that speaks to you that they would fly to be a part of something that you've put together, Audrey, that says a lot about who you are as a person. You know, I think that's, um, you're so humble. You've always been so humble. So I just wanted to toot your horn because you don't toot your own horn enough. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, like all of these people said yes to Audrey. It's to not Audrey. Like it's, yes. You know, it's like, and they understand, like I said, I mean, anyone that knows you knows that she's she's about bringing um, people together. And, you know, and I think that's the key with um, this field is understanding um, is understanding our limitations and at working together. Um, well, uh, yeah, agreed. And like Tracy and I were talking or Tracy, Michelle and I talk about this all the time, like we're so grateful that we have each other on this journey because starting ASAP was was and is still it's like your love hate you love it and you're so passionate about it but you also are tired and it does take up time and you know it's sometimes you hate the thing you you love and you're a part of and even Audrey like talking with you you emailed me and you're writing a chapter for for a book and you're you're doing so much on top of a private practice, on top of being a professor, on top of starting some something so needed in this world internationally. Um, it's not easy. And thank God we all have each other and we want to lift each other up. And so what's the journey been like for you? And you're a mom. I mean, like, <laughs> come on. So what's it, what's it been like? Because I know this has been tough and, uh, a hard journey and your um what's it been like for you I know this? I know I mean but then at the end I I feel I get energy uh from people like you guys that are surrounded by the good people I think that is at the end that actually make me going right um yeah it's been you can say tough and it's I committed a lot of stuff um that I think last weekend I was kind of writing down what was due and I still need to submit three book chapters uh, four papers one is a revision <laughs> oh and then I'm running the the welcome party for the new fellows and then I'm actually my LA office actually moving so oh you're kidding yeah, so we build from scratch to, to the new office is like about 90% construction done. And actually this weekend, actually tomorrow and this Saturday and Sunday, we're going to have a little kind of training um, going on in not even finish the construction. So I get stressed out that I actually... <laughs> Then I ordered the chairs and tables and you know all those and then my son only son is applying for college so this is critical year that I have to look at the schools and uh you know just he's, he's a summer package and looking at their summer program so yeah it's so overwhelming it is overwhelming and I tell you what to the mom side of things you know it's uh Nobody prepared me for how much my kids needed me at that age for college and for these decisions. There are big decisions, you know, and you want to be very present because, you know, sometimes I feel pulled and scattered and I have to like, okay, what needs my attention right now? What could I put on a shelf right now and focus on that? So I understand what you're saying. Um, 
and the fact that but I'm sure he's so proud of you. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm very lucky that I have very easy, easy going, healthy, uh, mentally and um, physically healthy son who doesn't need a mom too much, but then <laughs> still love me whenever I'm around. <laughs> so I'm very lucky to have a perfect son. Um, and I think the, I think at the end, I still, um, I feel appreciate the everything, what I have that, you know, I still am healthy and have energy to do this. Um, I just try to, I say, surviving versus thriving. <laughs> I yes. always so I like I tried to thrive but maybe I just survived today and I so, um so I have a like the to-do list my to-do list is, is is long but um somebody actually teach me so how I survive every day might be little tips so I have a, like a big on my diary I have actually four sections well on the on the top is very important and then very urgent uh, on the right is important, but it's not too urgent. And then on the bottom is not very important, but it's kind of urgent. <laughs> and then on the bottom is not very important and it's not very urgent. So I, um, and there is like a to-do list. Um, my, like a crazy day, I try to do only on the left to top corner, the, the most important and urgent one I try to do per day just I have my to-do list and then if I have some time or like a breathing room like a today that I'm available because my Chicago meeting got canceled so then I'm trying to do other sections um, so I have some like on my diary I have a different um, level of a to-do list and then my daily to-do list to kind of survive but then I think this uh, four section kind of give me um kind of reflect what I am doing. Uh, so I have like kind of one year goal. I don't have 10 year goal, but I have like one year goal and then maybe next five year goal um, that what I want to do. Um, and then I get like a little bit more detail, but um, I'm always like overdue. <laughs> I'm always, <laughs> I, know. I mean, there is no way we can get to ask for the extensions. I'm, I'm so sorry. And I for the extensions, but um I think that's how it's my survival skill. But I think recently um, I'm trying to uh, take care of myself uh, that it became a little bit higher on the priority. That, uh, Good for my you. Health, yeah, my health is not as the same. I still don't have time to do exercises, but at least I try to get my sleep time because I teach sleep. I know how important to sleep and my sleep is always compromised. So I try to get my sleep quality is one of the top priority. And then, um, so now I have a, like aura ring. And oh, I was wondering, <laughs> I have mine too. I was wondering if you had an aura ring on. Tracy yeah. lost her. Tracy had a nice aura ring and then she lost oh, yeah. it. And then, and then I lost it. Like, oh, <laughs> but, so but, the point, the point yeah. yesterday, my sleep was not good. And today it's like, okay, I'm going to make up. I need to pay my sleep debt. I'm going to sleep two extra hours, whatever it takes. Don't bother me. I'm in the <laughs> yeah, I was wondering, is that technology still the most advanced right now? Because I know Samsung is coming out with a ring like, like I Samsung am, watch, they gonna do even sleep test the um the sleep. Yeah. Oh wow! I hate watches. Like I I don't I love. I mean the wearable, but I think now uh, in terms of home sleep test, not maybe not everyday wearable, but there are so many good one out there. Yeah. Uh, home sleep test. So again, go back to World Sleep Society. Uh, we're gonna have all wearable talking about. Um, in our uh, Thursday course by Dr. Umakan Katwa and Dr. Jerry Simonson's, the favorite two mm. physicians. But that was a hot topic, wearables, because yeah. everybody wants to be able to like test them. So yeah, and now that. there are so many new home sleep study out there. So some, they're all different technologies. Some of them from the jaw movement. Some of them is still there, like a traditional actigraphy. Uh, some of them is heart to variability. 
so they have like different technology, but there are so many new ones. There's some of them on the chin, some of them is forehead, some of them on the in the ring, some of them is on the wrist, and they have all different report. And nowadays is relatively uh, good price, relatively cheap. Uh, California now the dentists are allowed to order sleep home sleep study. Mm, okay, we cannot read it, but we still we are allowed to do it. So we kind of by when did that st- when did they allow that in California? Because I know Texas and California have kind of been um, some obstacles there. I heard six weeks ago. Okay, uh, I think. Weeks. Tracy just jumped off. She waved goodbye to everybody. So Tracy <laughs> just left just so everybody knows. So you said six weeks ago? Yeah. Yeah. Six wow. weeks. Wow. Six, six to eight weeks ago. Okay. So one of um, the good dentists uh, in California really pushed. So we are able to order. We still cannot read, but we still right. order the, dent- the home sleep study. And then once we get the report, now you know what to do. So I think it's important to kind of read what it means because a patient going to bring it and how we actually implement to our patients. So I think that will be very hot courses. And I, I picked the best speakers. You did. I'm, I'm seriously looking through this and you guys need to go check this out. Please go check this out. Um, dentofacialsleep.org slash register to go. Um, but, and you can also join membership. There's a section to become a member, but you got to check out these big hitters. I mean, like I said, I mean, these are amazing topics. And what's so interesting about sleep? Um, I mean, sleep medicine is a newer science among all the other, all the other branches. Um, and such an important one and good grief, pediatric sleep medicine is even newer. Mm -hmm. Um, so things are changing and very dynamic. And those of you listening, any healthcare providers listening, it's really important to be part of some kind of community or organization that's giving you the latest and greatest. And because the information is coming so fast and it's good to have somebody that can, kind of help you decipher and um, pull it all together and at least be able to go to a meeting and how can we best help our patients and our, even our families, you know, uh, to be their best selves and healthiest selves. I wanted to go back to CG and how you met CG and how you even got involved with that in Stanford. I mean, do you mind? Do you have a few minutes to talk yeah, about that? Maybe I go to the short version. Okay. Uh, so, okay. Um, my life profoundly changed about 11 years ago when I met my mentor, the CG. Um, I was introduced to him by uh, Dr. Stanley Liu. Um, yeah. Now he's in the NOVA. Uh, he's a chair in the NOVA Southeastern University. Um, that time as a an early adapter, I was playing with Marpi, meniscrosis palate expanders. This is the time where MSC2 was not even out yet. So there was some like the new early version of Marpi uh, from Korea, like uh, from Germany and some, um, I think Dr. Moon was kind of playing with the initial version. And then I'm an early adapter. So I use Marpi on my patients to expand the, you know, palate skeletally and then patient is uh, saying that they can breathe better some of them say they don't need a CPAP anymore some of them they say they are able to reduce their pressure setting so I thought it was a good idea uh, to use this Marpi to our adult sleep apnea patients so at that time the Marpi was only we using for for dental reason so the originally um, the meeting, first meeting with CG was supposed to be just quick. His office meeting, so Stanley said, oh, I'm going to uh, make you, uh, I'm going to make you to meet CG uh, on like, his office. It's supposed to be like a really quick meeting. And I introduced the new concept of the Marpi side. When I show, I, when I show him my cases, you see CG's eyes <laughs> getting and he's so excited. You know, CG is the one who actually uh, published the expander 
help for sleep with Dr. Paola Pirelli in 2004. So he loves orthodontics. He loves surgeon. But he always knew that you know, this is not possible for adults. And then when I show, he's like, eyes. His eyes. <laughs> and then he just pull out the pen and he started designing his own version of mini screws. You know, oh. like the Christian can never know. <laughs> You know, he's a neurologist. Despite his lack of dental training, he enthusiastically uh, <laughs> became an implant designer. And then, like, we found ourselves sketching implant and different marquee design and exploring how they could be applied in the field of sleep medicine. And supposed to be a brief meeting turned into be like inspiring five hour marathon <laughs> of <laughs> creativity, innovation. And I, I, the after meeting, I even the design on the computer and send him email. I still have that email. But then at the end of it, CG says, Audrey, you will speak the Wasm World Sleep Society meeting in Seoul, Korea next year. So like, like I think you're crazy because uh, <laughs> I, I don't have any research to share. And you put me on this like a big word, you know, international stages. And he says, Audrey, you show the possibility to the world. Mm, and that that's is him. so well said. That's him. Like at, at that meeting, my life changed. So it's all about possibility in image. It is about the possibility. I think that's what too, like Audrey, when we all talk about this, and of course there can be some heated sometimes back and forth. And there's just so much that we see and that has happened and quality of life changes for so many people that the possibilities it's our responsibility to investigate these possibilities and to help people i mean i understand we throw the word obstructive sleep apnea around a lot with this but even in the medical community they're challenging the algorithms and even the um you know, organization of this, of this disease, this condition, uh, obstructive sleep apnea. And really, the, so, I mean, we're still even diving into what are we even, people are being helped, but what, what is it that we're helping with? We're still trying to figure all of that out. I mean, I remember the first time I saw CG, it was when he spoke at the American Dental Association's first pediatric airway symposium and he stood on stage and the whole room got quiet because it was CG. <laughs> and then he stood there and everybody was waiting for what was going to come out of his mouth. Yeah. And in his uh, French, strong French accent, it was, I don't even know what obstructive sleep apnea is, you know? And he was so <laughs> humble and Everybody's like, wait, CG doesn't even know what obstructive sleep apnea is. But here we are still. I, I, he's honest and brave and progressive. And um, we're all so grateful. And I feel his spirit here too. I, I mean, I were just all so grateful for what he has done and um, the platform he's given us for this collaboration. He has been banging the drum for collaboration between dentistry and medicine for a long time. And I think I mean, it's going to happen. Yeah, that's how actually I wrote uh, the roadmap paper too, because his passion and vision um, for pediatric sleep was very, very strong. Um, he had those vision that um, like you, at the end, sleep medicine has to be prevent preventive medicine. And he also inspired me to develop some growth modification protocol because People, you know, you think you know, but most of people doesn't know. You need to give some roadmap, a guideline, and you need to help our kid imagine, come up with a new idea and test them. You know, the power of imagination can transform the medicine from treating disease to preventing them. Mm -hmm. And he has many brilliant ideas. So he really encouraged it to open my eyes and same thing is like, like if I try to publish, I don't think it's publishable. We don't have any evidence. And just you just give them the guidance and then you let the people test them and then you accept this is wrong. You if it's good that you improve, and that's how we improve our field. 
And, you know, years after his passing, uh, the sleep expert, including Dr. David Guzal, Dr. Mm. Kuchita, and Dr. Rafael Palayo, and I mean, these are big names, basically saying it's time. So we that's how I was able to publish the roadmap um, of craniofacial growth modification for children uh, in the Journal of Sleep. This is his journal. He's the one who found that journal. Um, and that was an actually dedication to CG. And I feel like I complete the long overdue assignment, like homework um, yeah. after nine years he gave to me. But yeah, that's, uh, so I, I feel like his spirit is still here when I'm, you know, when we're talking about him. Yes, I love, I love this. Um, I, you're also going to have, you have chapters and books coming out and that roadmap is going to be in the pediatric, so for dental for pediatric dentists, which that's huge. Yeah. Yeah. That is a big deal. Um, I know you're busy. I appreciate you being here today. And um, I, I always end with three questions. So uh, do you mind if I ask you three quick questions before you get off of here? Yes. Okay. She's like, you did, <laughs> you, you did try to get them out of me earlier. And I said, Nope, I'm not going to tell you. Okay. These are simple. First, because you, we were just talking about how busy you are and everything. What is one of your biggest passions outside of your profession? Like, what do you, what's something that you're passionate about that has nothing to do with orthopedics? <laughs> <laughs> I love cooking. Oh, I love it. <laughs> and I like traveling to kind of new, new places. I have seen um, on Facebook that your son likes to cook too. Uh, he he's actually a good cook, so we actually have very similar tastes. So we sometimes cook together while we're gonna eat together. So when we go to new places, uh, even though sometimes through the work, we always just uh, find the the good, like go to restaurants, and um, we actually bring we buy some the local recipes, like a mm. local little. Um, you know, those spice and stuff. And then we try to cook. I think tonight we're going to um, cook some Singapore uh, chicken. Oh, that <laughs> sounds good. That sounds so good. Well, post a picture, send, send me a pic. <laughs> um, second, what is your favorite season of the year? Yeah, it's, a, it's supposed to be winter. <laughs> but then now I live in California, so we don't really have a winter, but I love snow and uh, I'm actually, um, I love skiing. So that is another thing yeah, on, the, on the winter season, we go skiing. And I think my four, 40th birthday, uh, my bucket list was doing heli skiing. Oh my goodness. So I, so I we went to... Um, we went to Canada and we did a heli skiing when I was there. Yeah, yeah, my 40th birthday. So my 50th birthday coming next year in Singapore. <laughs> so when you come to World Street Congress next year in Singapore, we're going to have uh, my birthday party. 50th. Yes, let's do it. I'm going to be 50 <laughs> in a few weeks. So I'm right there with you, girl, with the 50th. Oh, yeah. Can have a joy to party. <laughs> yes, yes. It's like I can't even believe 50. It sounds like, but maybe I think 50 is the new 40. At least that's what I'm telling myself. 50 is yeah, the new 50, 40. Yeah, I'm not doing ski. I'm just having party with my <laughs> <laughs> and then my final question, and and as I wrote it down, because I was just curious myself, only because I was dealing with this myself today, but I'm I don't know if uh with all your travel, if you have this as an option, but do you have a pet? I don't have pet. Um, I don't think I can afford to have. A <laughs> well, I'm like as I'm th I'm sitting there. I'm like, I wonder if she has a pet. Um, but I'm thinking with all your travel, how could you have a pet? If you didn't travel so much, would you have a pet? Yeah, yeah. I think when I retire, I'm gonna have a little cute puppy. Oh, <laughs> I, I love it. A, I grew up with a dog, so when I was my childhood, I have like probably six different dog. Um, but then after I move here, so I live with my in-law and my in-law uh, hate. <laughs> the oh, they're like no dogs. <laughs> and my, when my son really wanted to have 
pet. So we had, um, we had a hamsters and then uh, we have a three hamster, but they all kind of die within six months. And we end up having a little puppy. But then, you know, as you know, your son won the puppy, but then they really play with it 30 minutes and they and they're done with it. <laughs> done with it and they all become my job. Yes. And my in-law doesn't want to touch. So when we had a pet, my pet sleep whole day. And then when I come home, they just like jump at me and <laughs> ask me to play. So the whole night I have to play with them. And you know, it didn't it didn't work out. So after six months I have to give to my assistant. Uh, but yeah, I mean when I you are a dog person though. I'm a dog person. Yes. Yeah. I can, I can see that in you. I was wondering, some people are cat people and I was just trying to guess for myself. I thought I would like to ask her that. Well, I they- had a cat too when I was a little. So at, uh, when I was, um, when I grew up, we had a cat and dog at the same, oh. the same household. It's very, very funny. When they're baby, they actually hang out together. They're like a, um, they actually hunt together. Oh, they, well, they didn't know they were um, arch rivals when they grow up together, cats and dogs. They just think, hey, we're in the same litter. They actually, I remember they actually catch some little like bird and even like a small rat, like a small mice. So, and then like my Jindo dog was kind of chasing the rat and then Ray, like the rat is like kind of running and then the, my cat kind of hiding the corner and then the- <laughs> caught it and then they're like so proud like okay this is a two days our catch and they put it on in front of our front door like every day like today catch like one two three like two but then when they get older and become a little big they don't talk they they just go to the different side that is so funny it's like they had a system of hunting together and uh it is funny how they bring you their, whatever their kill is. Like yeah. they're so proud and they want to show you and they bring it to yeah. you. Like, look, yeah. look what I did. And you're like, what is this on my porch? <laughs> Every day, like oh, I'm afraid to open the doors. <laughs> what is it today? <laughs> what is it today? And then they get like all those like a little game, like a small, like a sparrow. Or, I mean, yeah, they, they so we didn't have any mice and red for like <laughs> Not with those two hunters. Oh, I love it. Well, thank you, Audrey. And you know what? I I'm I'm glad um you have the day to kind of uh get caught up. Sometimes these um, like I said, everything happens for a reason and your day was going to be packed with something in Chicago, and now you've got some time to get caught up. So I hope you get to really enjoy yourself and enjoy your Singapore chicken tonight with your son. Too. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you pleasure. so much, Audrey. We'll have you back on. And well, of course, we're going to see you in November at the I WDSS. Yeah. All right. Thank you so, so much. Bye, everybody. This podcast would not be possible without the inspiration of my dad, Dan Becker, and creative direction and editing from the talented Jason Becker, Benjamin, and Judo Walker. To stay connected and keep the conversation going, be sure to subscribe to our podcast and visit our website at asaphathway.com. And remember, the information in this podcast is for educational purposes only. It's not intended to be used as medical advice to replace your healthcare provider's diagnosis or recommendations.